Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Healthspan newsletter. First a disclaimer, in this newsletter series we are sharing the latest research studies, news and events in the healthspan field that we have found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. In this week's newsletter the focus will be on skin. First we will talk about a peptide which may help reduce the skin's biological age. Second about how toxins in yoga mats may cause allergies and thirdly a look at red light therapy and the mechanisms behind it. And we will finish off with a longevity conference. Let's have a look at an interesting paper which was released as a preprint on BioArchive. The paper reports on a study using a peptide to help reduce the age and improve the health of skin. There are both internal and external factors in the aging of skin. Changes in hormones as we age lead to reduced hyaluronic acid and collagen deposition and reduced cellular proliferation. External factors include sun exposure and smoking also cause damage and aging. Looking for the underlying cause for aging, the authors propose the accumulation of senescent cells in the skin. Not only do they not perform a useful function, but they also are active inducers of aging and dysfunction. They do this through the release of SASP which includes several pro-inflammatory molecules. Starting with a library of 764 peptides, the authors identified the most promising one called peptide 14. They then tested this in comparison to retinol and rapamycin on human skin cultures. They saw that it supported rejuvenation in 2D and 3D systems as measured by cellular and molecular markers of aging, senescence and DNA methylation. The last of these using the mole clock, an epigenetic clock specific to skin tissue. Interestingly, during the toxicology test, they found that the peptide also increased the lifespan of nematode worms. A word of caution I do need to mention on this. Looking at the competing interests and funding section, we can see that the study was funded by one skin and the main authors have stakes in the company. The company has a skin cream containing the peptide for sale. So the good news is the therapy is available on the market, though only in the US at this time. The not so good news is that the study was done by the people from the company. It is however interesting to see peptides making their way into the mainstream and a skin cream based on this technology being available. Nowadays, whether you are doing yoga or not, you may use a yoga mat at home. It's convenient for stretching or meditation. My wife bought a new yoga mat earlier this year, after which she continuously gets an allergy on her wrists, especially after she does the cat pose. She also found that the yoga mat has a very chemical smell which makes her feel unwell. For anyone who may get skin allergy or fatigue after using a yoga mat, please check this out. Earlier this year, the Hong Kong Consumer Council tested yoga mats from 30 manufacturers and found 28 of them contain more than one harmful substance that could cause irritation to the respiratory tract, eyes and skin. The Hong Kong Consumer Council is a government organization which conducts tests on consumer products to provide unbiased comparative results to help consumers make rational choices. Out of the 30 yoga mats tested, 28 contained formamide, with 9 models exceeding the European Union's cut-off limit. Formamide is a reprotoxic substance that is mor moderately irritating to eye, skin and mucous membranes. According to the European Chemicals Agency, it is classified as a toxic for reproduction, category 1b. Animal studies showed that prolonged exposure to formamide could cause harm to the reproductive systems. Also, there is a scientific study on safety risk assessment for formamide in yoga mats published in 2019. We were surprised to read the conclusion. After comparing hazardous degrees of formamide to different people in different scenarios, it is necessary to avoid taking children to venues with many yoga mats, such as yoga clubs. So what to do with a new yoga mat? According to the French Agency for Food, Environmental and Occupational Health and Safety, the level of formamide emission in foam mats is highest in the beginning and decreases rapidly in the next few days. In about a month, the emission drop to a level considered safe for humans. Therefore, before using a new yoga mat, it should be left open in a place with good ventilation and kept out of reach of infants and pets for a period of time. Also, we just started to try red light therapy for my wife's allergy. This is the device we bought. It only cost about 70 USD. Let me try to turn it on. 
In fact, red light therapy has a number of proposed benefits, including that it is good for building collagen and reducing inflammation. Let me explain the mechanism behind the red light therapy. The idea of light therapy started in 1967, soon after lasers were invented. Since then, there has been a lot of research on the subject, and more than 1,000 peer-reviewed papers have been published. It is known as either low-level light therapy, or more recently PBM, or photobiomodulation. Originally done using lasers, it has now been shown that it does not require lasers, and an ordinary light source will work, as long as the light is of the correct frequency. Here are some of the claimed benefits of red light therapy. We are just starting to look at this, so we will concentrate on the increased cell energy production and reducing inflammation. Despite the time that the technology has been known about and the number of papers written on it, the process does not seem to be well understood. So let's take a simplified view of a couple of the benefits. One of the benefits of red light therapy is the increase in ATP generation by mitochondria, the primary source of energy in the cell. The proposed mechanism for this is that a chemical in mitochondria called cytochrome C oxidase becomes bound to nitrous oxide in place of the oxygen that is required for the generation of ATP. The red light in the range of 600 to 810 nanometers and near infrared in, in the 800 to 1000 nanometer range breaks this connection and disassociates the nitrous oxide from the mitochondria, opening the space for oxygen to bind instead, leading to an increase in ATP production. This also increases the amount of ROS, or reactive oxygen species, which activates the anti-inflammatory machinery in the cell. One of the primary outcomes that this process would have is an increase in nitrous oxide, and this paper looked at how the flux of nitrous oxide in the cells changed during and after irradiation with the various wavelengths of light, alone and in combination as a measure of how effective those wavelengths were. Interestingly, they found that a combination of blue and near-infrared was most effective, though they also found that red and near-infrared in combination were better than either alone. On the slide, we can see the red and near-infrared in the black ovals and the combined in the red oval. Although the increased levels of nitrous oxide do point to the mechanism being related to nitrous oxide, as they say in the conclusion, it looks like the process is more complicated than this, and their results cannot be explained by only the theory of nitrous oxide disassociation. We are just tr starting to try infrared and we will try it on my wife's allergic skin issues and I will see if it helps in my recovery after exercise. It will be an interesting experiment to see how it works for us. Now let's have a look at an upcoming longevity event. The Century Summit, a four days virtual conference, will be held in December in collaboration with the Stanford Center for Longevity. The event will bring together leaders in business, media, policy and research to discuss the implications of the 100-year life. It's good to hear that ageing is getting more attention. The four days conference is free and you just need to register in Eventbrite for tickets first. The link to register can be found in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.